calling with whatever we do Johnny Safu no love with whatever we do Halei the moon you school Nyepam nene kudlu kula Nyepam gira gala gena Nyepam nene kudlu kula Ibulo ke nungoto ni beti sola Ibulo ke dato ni beto do Bigi Eh eh Bigi kongo Lamin Na Lamin ke jive nuri nte nyame lamin Kamu na uloko Uloko na nyinta mo lamin Pabili ki Muna ngata afongo le Ahana Ngata ngata Kotole, Fabrama, Mingi, Baba Nyole, No, Kotole, Fabrama, No, you want to come to the thing, Fabrama, you want to come, Nele, Barry Muso, Mankontande. Mankonta ananda mandi. Allah ni mkombo kura. Ananda Allah kombo. Lendo la jang karamu wal soro nda duro. Kami kura wa mara lo kombo. Kwa hindi wa mara karamu wal soro nda. Karamu wal soro nda. Lami na dara lo nino la. Aman kura fena suho. Ado mune ke la. Lami. Ije fwe de malo kone sinol de rajoto. Nga fine. Nga fine. Iko yi kari mo lami. Nga fine. 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 Fatu. Ha. Nga fine. Nga fine. Nga fine. Nga fine. Nga fine. Nga fine. Ah, faru dance, aku nak ambil aja lagi supaya orang aja di nol budget. Jalan tanding kilo waru. Ah, ibu sering jalan. Saya lamin faru nanti kuki lima kilo laba, but lamin bila kau ulo kau nanyin time mu. Ah, lamin. Aman dari fenda lah. Ite ni ite ni ni kau ni mana sih ya kau ni semua lama rajut itu balon lah. Mereka ke afen lepas nyaram ni dia orang. Jalan terjuk. Afen lepas ni dia orang. Balon lepas ni cikir itu. Ah, ni mana kerana mereka kuki le. Ya, jadi nanti kerana nombor sama lagi ayat hari je. Perniaran ni, kamu kurang hobi dengan kamu. Ini nara jadi ni songka baik. Kalau lamin banyak dah ulah, baru kerana mood besar. Apa ni membeli? Kau kau tu awal ni nanti, baru ngan ni ni lamin, kuntal. Kamu kurang, kau ikhlas memang kamu kurang asal total. Asal total awal aku ni. Baru ni kau isi suah kau ni. Ibe kerana mood dia kerana rajul ni telal tu. Kalau telal macam ni, macam asal total bunga. Baru rajul ni bulan kau tu. Ha, betul. Baru ni sanga isi ayam lamun. Saya dua kerana. Kalau tak ada bulan. Ada dua kerana. Kamu kenyal. Ada juga aku ulama lagi. Bukan apa lagi. Ibe nak keran di luar kalau jele. Di dalam ada juga orang mana? Ah, ia subjek orang baby. Ibe baby jele. Ulama nak cuci cuci mulai. Fadzan sewal ya. Muka macam ni kerana di ni mulai baby. Kita dumpung orang kerana apa? Asal tak ada. Lain malam kita orang ada. Bari left ada. Ideal go in the every year second one lah first. Mana ni kalau dia? Anda go follow nasi ni lambat. Anda nasi ni lama apa? Saya mbak fokus yang kotor. Walau fomo yang mulindi. Ya lo fomo kita. But you fed am bulat aku kau kau dalam ini nanti jambi. Lami ni yang tak kara nang, nanti lebih jiko bayi nengka. Ya bula ya kara, ulo kana tak kila ria bambalo. Yo be bula jeng koto dinding oisi ayala ayala lesi nol lamai rajot. Orang kamu dah kara mual masuk lamin yang nak kara si suara. Lamin yang si nol ayala lesi nol. Tadi kau korang kos malang. Kila ria bambalo. Saya bingung nak kumamai. Saya bingung ni mana. Thank you bro. Mereka korang di lalai dah baru. Semua orang itu baru. Mereka baru orang ready ni. Ha. Abang jeng korang mual berapa mana? Yo, kalau jalan jalan, orang bukan sendiri mula. Kalau jalan jalan, abad rosak. Kalau ikut aku follow, aji benori ni. Lambat tak minyak? Minyak mana nari? Teku, 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 teku. Baru yang kau dah faham ke? Ya, emas ni mana yang nyambut? Ha. Sisol nak kerja, kisah kisah mana sisol? No, 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 kau pun kau pun kau nyawa. Baru yang bukiru ni mana nak kafin? Ini nampak korosor lagi. Ini nampak korosor lagi. Angan lelim betah deh, banyak bodoh di lana. Jangan nampak korosor lagi. Nada, nada, jangan nada. Kau baru faham kita. Nada bungkon, tapi bungkon, tapi bungkon, tapi bungkon. Jangan jangan dogo file. Kau kerja baru nampak ni pelol lagi tak? Iya, ada nampak bungkon. Bismillah. Bismillah. Yeah, from what tanka is in a dulu tanka, hey, hey, koro, koro, koro ta, hey, koro, koro, koro ta.
Hello viewers, uh, my name is Samuel D. Kwede and um, I'm your tutor for physics today and uh, we're going to continue our discussion today on black body radiation, quantized energy and the photoelectric effect but uh, because of time we're going to take the first one and if time permits we proceed to the order but if we, if we do not finish you have to watch out for the next lesson. It's a continuation of what we're going to do. So now, let's start from the first. Now, in, at the start of the 20th century, our understanding of the physical world was changing rapidly, of course. If you can recall my previous lessons I discovered, I was able to explain the discovery of the electron. And also, I was able to tell you about the cathode ray experiment, the famous one that led to the discovery of the electron. And so at the start of this 20th century, our understanding of the physical world was changing rapidly. The electron was discovered. There was evidence that the atom, which had been considered as a small, the smallest particle from that thing's idea, all matter made up of, of atoms, which are indivisible, remember that uh, concept from that in and we had an internal structure of the atom we are able to discuss the internal structure of the atoms we now debunk that theorem that uh, the ultimate end of the was atom and we ended up discovering the other component of the atom so and from our previous lessons also we were able to look at the cathode ray and the cathode ray experiment done by JJ we were able to discover the electrons so now the end of that century, uh, our target was actually how to challenge ourselves on light. Light was a big challenge. What is this light? And what is the constituent of that light? So our topic first here is to tell us what bodies look like. So what is a black body? It's a body which absorbs all electromagnetic radiation as light. I just told you that the challenge in the 19th century, after discovery, all of that was to see what is the component of this light. So if light falling on bodies, some bodies will absorb all the radiation, the electromagnetic radiation that's the light that falls on it. And when that body absorbs all the electromagnetic radiation falling on it, we call it a black body. So when a radiation falls on a body, part of this radiation will be reflected and parts will be absorbed and the rest will be transmitted. Now, the fraction of transmission or absorbing, not even reflecting, is given by light equation there. Remember I said, part of it, when light falls on a body, part of that light is reflected, part is absorbed, and part is transmitted. So the, all those fractions added together will always give us one. So if I have an object that can reflect all the light, and absorb nothing and transmit nothing as well, that object becomes a white body. And conversely, if I have an object that will not reflect but absorb all the radiation falling on it and transmit nothing, now that object becomes a black body. That's what we're talking about here. A black body is an object that absorbs all the radiation and force on it. So now we look at the absorption fraction and the reflection fraction and even the transmission fractions. There are some other objects that allow the light to transmit through them like glass prisons and stuff like that. So now let's look at an example of this black body. It could, it could um, take it from the fact that it could be lamp black. Some of you have come across lamp black or platinum black. It's a black body. It absorbs all the radiation falling on it. Now all objects emits electromagnetic radiation, which depends on their temperature. That is the thermal radiation, you know. A black body absorbs all the radiation I just told you that, that is light, which falls on it. And because no light is reflected or transmitted, that body appears black when it is cool. So because when, when for the fact that it doesn't reflect or transmit, it's going to absorb all the light falling on it, then it appears black when it cools down. But however, when it is heated very well, they will always give a spectrum. And that emitted spectrum 
is dependent upon the temperature of that black body. That emitted spectrum is what we call the black body radiation. So for as much as it's going to be absorbing all the radiation, but it's going, when it is heated very hot, it still emits a spectrum of radiation which is categorized according to the temperature of the body. So it is temperature dependent. Watch out for that. We'll come back to the objective question. Now we look at this. We say, what is a normal body? Now, I just told you that see, it's a body, a black body is a body that absorbs all the radiation falling on it. Now, at normal room temperature, we are not aware of this radiation. So you must be also conversant with the fact that maybe you are even giving out a radiation because of the temperature, you are at normal temperature, so room temperature, you are not aware of that radiation. But all bodies give out radiation, your calculator, your, even the human beings, your TV, whatever. So now, but as object becomes hotter, watch out what they do, we can feel the infrared radiation. That's what you feel when you take electric ion and you fix it onto the wall and you plug in your current and it becomes heated. Now, if you bring your arm closer to it, you feel the radiation, even when the uh, ion is not close to your body. When you go put it closer to your body, you feel the radiation. That's, uh, that is infrared radiation and it's heat. Now, at even hotter temperature, when the object becomes hotter as well, it glues. And when it glues, you can see that it, it appears red sometimes. And at a very hot temperature, a still hotter temperature, it will glow again and give other colors. So you can see the light bulb over there. When it is heated at some temperature, you saw that it became red. So the other light bulb is white. So you can, you can continue heating the body. It will glow from red. It can go through orange, go to yellow and blue. And when it is extremely hot, it can even go up to white. And that is the stage, I think, where we have our sun. Our sun is glowing white, what's so called it white light. You know, when all the radiations are, are visible in that. So watch out for this theorem. But before I go to that theorem, I want you to first of all remember that the body will glow as I'm increasing the temperature. It will glow from red, it goes through orange, it goes through yellow, and when it is severely hot, it goes up to white, it glows white. Now, let's see how somebody tried to relate that because this, the sun is at a very high temperature. So for as much as we said at that temperature, as it's glowing, it is going to change its color and becomes white. That is the, 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 the idea behind the white light. Now, somebody, Wilhelm uh, Wines, dis uh, tried to dis discover a law that will interpret that relationship. So what he did was that he wanted to compare the wavelength of that white body and the temperature of the white body. Remember I told you that when it is heated to some temperature, they will give out a spectrum. And that wavelength of that spectrum has a business with the temperature. So he wanted to know that. He says that the maximum wavelength associated with a black body is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature. It's inversely proportional to the absolute temperature. So like, like, what do I mean by that? So let me just emphasize that on the board. It means that the maximum wavelength associated to, to a black body is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature. And the absolute temperature in Kelvin, for that matter. So now, if we now see an object that is hotter, so as you're getting hotter, that's how your wavelength becomes you know, smaller because of inverse proportionality. So let's consider the sun. The sun has set up to a temperature of 6,000 degrees Celsius. So the sun is very hot. So what we expect from the sun is that the wavelength is going to be a shorter wavelength. So the sun gives us short wavelengths. And that short wavelength is inversely proportional to the temperature of the sun. So it is based upon this theorem that we can, we can remove the proportionality sign to this a constant. Let's call that constant k. I'll call it there. So k is equal to lambda that. So we'll watch out for this equation. We're going to use it a lot. So now, and this constant was given by two, according to that gentleman, Wines, he said 898 times 10 to the power minus 3 meter Kelvin. Meter for wavelength and temperature for Kelvin. So that constant of proportionality was given by the Wines. That's you watch out for this constant. We're going to use it a lot here. So now how does this apply to the sun's behavior with the Earth? You know, remember I said that it's the maximum wavelength associated with the a black body is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature. So now if we can see an application in the greenhouse effect in cold regions, 
we have houses that are constructed in the cool region. Here it's difficult to get uh, sound to photosynthesize, so they depend on the uh, greenhouse. They say that's the greenhouse. And this greenhouse is made up of glass, and it is actually used to preserve plants and sometimes grow plants in there even. So let's, let's say that's the plant inside that house. You know, it's a glass house, so now that is sound which is hot at that temperature, very high temperature. Now, let's say that's 6,000 degrees Celsius. Now, that sun rays hits this house, and the glass of that house is a glass house. So that's what we call it the greenhouse effect. So I'm coming to explain that very soon. So now that sun's energy is transmitted through that glass. And when it's transmitted through the glass, it is because this is having a high temperature, so it's coming with a short wavelength. So there is short, the wavelength is short in that case is short wavelength. So the radiation coming because of the interaction here, we say high temperature is shorter wavelength. So that short wavelength will penetrate the glass and it goes onto that earth, which is the plant in there, the plant on the swirl or whatever, it gives it to that plant. And that plant use that uh, energy to photosynthesize and even use to preserve some of the vegetables in those countries, those cold countries. So now what, when this plant interact as the earth, the energy, it, its temperature is going to be, uh, it's going to emit radiation which is colder than the energy that came there. So a colder, that is a smaller temperature. Now because it's emitting, after the interaction with the radiation, the earth emits that radiation which is of colder temperature. And because the temperature is cold, you expect a longer wavelength. So now have a long wavelength. Now this long wavelength radiation, it's it's not going to pass through. The short wavelength will pass through the glass, but the long wavelength will not pass through the glass house. So what will happen? It will be stuck inside that glass house and it will be circulating inside that greenhouse and the plants will use it to photosynthesize and even preserve that plant. So that's how uh, cold countries grow their plants. That effect is what is called the greenhouse effect. Now, we can relate this greenhouse effect to the global warming. Watch what happens there. So if this was the greenhouse, this was the greenhouse there, which is a glass house, now, let's call it the glass house. Now, if it was the glass house, and that's, if we compare that to our situation on Earth, right, now we find out that the Earth, let's see, that's the Earth. Let's see the sun over there. And this is our Earth. Now, the Earth is surrounded by the atmosphere, of course. Now, what happens there is that, in this case, the Earth now takes the place of the plant. So now, and the sun is still there, it's still hot now bringing a very massive temperature there. So that radiation from the sun will pass through the atmosphere, and because it is short wavelength, it passes through the atmosphere and now enters the earth. And now the earth will use it, and the earth serve as the plant. And when the earth serve as this plant, then there is going to be a, a particular catastrophe that is happening now. That is the more reason why they tell you to control the rate at which you, uh, elim you emit the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Because when the carbon dioxide is e emitted from our industrial activities, the, 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 the industrial activities of the earth will emit the carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide will encompass the earth and envelop the earth. And when it envelops the earth, it's not going to serve as the glass. So that carbon dioxide serves as that glass. And when the short wavelength radiation from the penetrate through the atmosphere goes to the earth, the earth interacts with it. Now, the radiation given out by the earth is not going to pass through the, because it's going to be having a long wavelength in that case. Here it was a shorter wavelength. Now, this short wavelength will penetrate the atmosphere, but the one given by the earth is going to have longer wavelength and it's going to pass through the carbon dioxide because the carbon dioxide is going to serve as the glass and it is going to resist. And that energy will come back to the earth because the carbon dioxide layer will block that radiation from going to outer space. So what will happen? We will have that energy returning back to the Earth. And what the, the consequences there is that the Earth becomes warmer. And when the Earth becomes warmer, that is what we refer to as global warming because the Earth is the globe. And that global warming is what leads to the ice in the, in, the, in the ice melts, you know what happens. We see that the volume of the sea will increase and you have all these coastal cities will be trying to relocate because you are going to, the, the, the water will claim the land. So that's what happens there. So we, we, we have seen the consequences of all of these uh, wines theorem in 
and two, greenhouse effect and also the global warming. So that is for global warming for you. So now we have just given you uh, the equation there. So Wilhelm Wines, through experimental observation, determine the following equation that's related to the color of the light and its temperature. I just established that for you. So that is the constant there I was just talking about, you see there. And this gentleman did a very good work for us. And we can use this to now answer. Watch out before you get to the questions. I said that the maximum wavelength as treated with a black body radiation is inversely proportional to the temperature of that body. So you must be able to understand the link between them. So it's being the hotter the body, then the smaller the wavelength or the shorter the wavelength and vice versa. So now watch out from what I've said from the summary there. You say, let's look at the question. It says, what are the properties of a black body radiator? Remember, I just said that a black body radiator, a black body absorbs all the radiation that falls on it and it doesn't re, it doesn't re emit anyone again, it just absorbs all. So the options read A, it absorbs all the incident radiation and then re emit it at a different frequency. That's not correct because we said the black bodies don't re emit. Now, B says it is always black, even when heated to high temperature, that's wrong. I said when it's heated, it will glow to different colors, ranging from red up to even white. So C, it absorbs all the incident radiation and does not re-emit any radiation. That's what I said. I said black bodies absorb all the radiation that falls on them and do not re-emit or do not reflect or transmit none. They absorb all of them. That is C. C is the correct answer in that question. So we have a correct answer as C. It absorbs all the incident radiation and does not re-emit any radiation. So watch out. Now, the next question says, which of the following colors indicates the hottest temperature of an object? Remember, I said that it will, when the black body is heated, they are going to range from red, it will pass through red, orange, yellow, blue, and then white. When it is extremely hot, as it is, becoming hotter. When it's hotter, it goes in that order there. So what, watch out for that question. We said, which of the following colors indicates the hottest temperature of an object? A says black, B says red, C says yellow, D says blue. So E says you need help. No, okay, we, we, we want to help you out here. So the correct answer there, is we're looking at our range here. We say it's the colors increases as I move from red, orange, orange to yellow, yellow to blue, and when it's extremely hot, it goes to white. So now we have D as the correct answer, that is blue. Blue is the one at the extreme over there. So blue is correct, D is the correct answer. So we go back to the next question. Which of the following colors indicates the coolest temperature of an object? So remember, I said that they will glow, and the temperature increase, it will glow from red, and it will go in that order. Now see that red came before orange, orange is there, yellow is there, blue is there, but in this order, red came before the orange. So if you look at it, it's gonna be the coolest. When it is cooler, this is cooler than this one. So red is the correct answer there. Which of the following colors indicates the coolest temperature of an object? It's, it's red. A is the correct answer. B says orange, C yellow, D blue, but A is the correct answer, which is red. Watch out. Now we look at this. Now he's using the Wines displacement law. I just established that relationship for you here. So I can screen here. So see how you go through it. Now we have, we have already established the relationship between the two. So we can now use it to do some free response question. Now watch here. We have, you can just screen. So you can see properly. Now, remember the relationship according to Wine says the wavelength is inversely proportional to that. So you now have wavelength as k over t, remember that? So k is wavelength that. And now that constant of proportionality I have just given you in this question is not given, but that is already perceived here. So we know that constant as 2.898 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 and is equals to, now this guy says, what is the wavelength that is associated with that maximum? So I read the question, using Wine's displacement law, what wavelength is the maximum contributor to the object's color at the temperature of 4,000 Kelvin? So now we want to find that wavelength. So we know the temperature, the temperature is 
thousand Kelvin. So I can divide that, and we have four thousand. So this guy. So what is this temperature? After dividing both sides by four thousand, four thousand cancels that. So we have two point eight nine eight times ten to the power minus three divided by 4,000 gives you that wavelength. So if you punch that on your calculator, you will have something like 724 nanometer. That is times 10 raised to the power minus nine meter. Or you have 724 nanometer. So if you look at the options, you have A says 314 nanometer A. Now B says 450 nanometer. C is 592 nanometer, D 724 nanometer. And now we can now settle down on D. D is 724 nanometer, if you can punch that from your calculator. So the correct option there is D 724 nanometer. Right, so we look at the black body as the temperature. The figure shows black body radiation cause of a black body at three different temperatures. And the classical physics prediction of the intensity of the light at 5,000 Kelvin. So watch this one. That was uh, another discrepancy here. This, this uh, is a, that was a clash between uh, classical physics and quantum physics. You know, classical physics deals with uh, Newtonian physics. We are the laws of Newton Hoos. And quantum physics needed to match the two together. But as this experiment brought a big problem between the classical physics and the quantum world. Or what happens with when you theorize, meaning you give a theory, and you predict the theory, and you now hypothesize that prediction, then you now discover, or you do the experiment yourself, and you discover different data. What will happen? That's how do you relate the that your theory you have asserted and what you have seen naturally, but what you have seen in real sense. So this was one of the problems. You know, it was perceived under the classical theorem, as you can see the 5000 key, the black line there tells you that um, the wavelength of this uh, black body at different temperatures, you know, as you move, I can just draw that for you, here you have, here so you see, here, I see the other colors submit here. That is 5,000, key 4,000, let's see. And, this, and you have 3,000, that other. Now this, this is, so here, let's say 0 0.5. So this is around 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, as you can see over there. Two, this is the wavelength in meters. Now see that spectral zones, you see. Here we can see that I have the ultraviolet somewhere here, and around here I have visible light. This is a spectrum, and you have the infrared. Now, see that it's a line. Let me give another color to that line so you see the difference. So, the blue line somewhere there, you see what classical physics was talking about here. This is a classical uh, prediction. It's a classical physics predicted that when the wavelength of the line, remember I'm moving this way. I'm reducing the wavelength. When I'm reducing the wavelength and the intensity, this was the intensity. The intensity, let's say it's two, four, six, eight, in that order. Now I have that. So as I was increasing, if I'm if I'm reducing the wavelength of particular radiation, black body radiation, if it's reducing, now according to the classical prediction, that if you reduce the wavelength coming towards zero, if we are approaching zero here, what will happen? The intensity will go to infinity. You see the asymptote over there it's telling you that this intensity will continue to infinity. Now it's, it, it, will, it will not curve like this. So now this was what was observed. They found out that the different colors at, as the wavelength, as the temperature was increasing as 3000 Kelvin, red light in that visible spectrum was available and they saw 4000 as the temperature was increasing, red, green, green came and you have, uh, the, the, you remember the spectrum of the white light? You see how they were coming there, you see red followed by green, and you see blue followed later on there. At 5,000, the last, the highest peak there is 5,000, and that's the blue. So if you see the visible region there, that's temperature 5,000, the visible region of the spectrum give light of different colors. You see that color, you see red, you have orange, you have blue, and you have even the, 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 the highest, they are blue. But the classical model just did not predict that. It says that they, as I reduced the wavelengths going towards zero, the 
classical model here now gives that black line. That black line tells you that the intensity becomes infinite. See, it's caught there. You see the, see the asymptote. It's infinite. The intensity becomes infinite, which was what was predicted. But what was observed after the experimental data was a different thing. They dis this was what they discov discovered. They saw the red here, and they, they saw the green and blues here. This was what was observed, and that this gave a difference between the, the Asate or Popote theorem, or Popote recovery, and what they have already seen experimentally. So that's needed to be corrected somehow. So when you plot the two, you see you have the, the x-axis plotting the wavelength, and emit, the wavelength emitted by the body, black body, and the y-axis showing how intensified is that wavelength that is how intensified is the light, that is the intensity on the y-axis, so you see the pattern of the curves, which is a deviant from what classical theorem predicted, as you see with the black line over there. So the same goes, you see the red and blue green colors, they saw the actual data when they did the experiment. Now, based upon their prediction, what they have seen now from doing the experiment was different from the prediction. The classical model now predicted that the, as you reduce the wavelength, moving from higher wavelengths, running down towards zero, the, the intensity of the, the, the light becomes infinite, and that was not what they observed. So there was a discrepancy there. So see what happened later on. The black line in, is what the exist, existing physics theorem predicted, what would happen when the temperature of the object will reach 5,000. That was what they were predicting, that when the temperature of the object reach 5,000, this is what happens. You see the black line, the intensity goes to infinity. So now, well, that was not what they saw. Now the light with the most intensive intensity shifted from the longer wavelengths, that's what I'm saying here, it's the longer wavelength here. So if, I, if, you, if I'm supposed to magnify them, you see that the magnitude of the wavelength, so as, as I'm coming down this way, I'm reducing the wavelength. So the, the higher intensified light, which is around here, the, the wavelength was shifting towards, down, towards the visible spectrum, that is towards the visible spectrum, like I said over there, and it starts as red light, it begins to glow as red light, like what I said, and it goes through yellow, it goes to blue, and finally, at 5,000 Kelvin, all the colors of the spectrum are present. And when the, all the colors are visible, that object becomes a white light. That's what we call the white light, which is the sun. The sun is in that category right now. So how this gave us. But we can now see a real problem that arises from this. The classical theory predicted, that is the black line, and the measured data, which is the blue and the green and the red, they predicted different ones. So you see the lines and the lines of the black and the lines of the colors, they are different. So the hint is that the black line just keeps increasing as the wavelength approaches zero. That's what the classical model, classical physics uh, purported. But well, that's not what we saw. So let's see what was the conclusion. The classical theory shows that the intensity of the emitted radiation approaches infinity as the wavelength gets shorter, which is, which is not what happened. Short, shorter wavelength means that the light is moving into a, the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. So now we can take some questions here. Yeah, see one. How does the you, how does using a graph of observed data from a black body radiation versus the theoretical prediction of the data helps illuminate problems with the theorem? The answer there is that if the experiment or observation is properly done, then the theorem must produce results that match the data. If not, the theorem must be modified, or if not possible, a new theorem must be created. The graph clearly shows a major discrepancies between the black body observed and its theoretical predicted behavior at 5,000 Kelvin. So question number two, as the temperature of the black body increases, what happens to the color of the emitted light? I told you that as it increases, it moves. A says it goes from white to black, wrong answer. B, it moves from red to yellow and to white. And C says it moves from white to red to yellow. D says it moves from visible light to infrared. B is the correct answer because I told you that it moves from red, go through orange to yellow and to white. So we will have B as the correct answer. It moves from red to yellow to white. So the next question is, what is the problem with the theoretical prediction of the black body behavior 
as its temperature increases. The problem here is, is the theory predicts that the intensity of the emitted light does not change as the wavelength decreases. Now, B says the theory predicts that the intensity of the emitted light approaches zero as the wavelength increases. C says the, 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 theory, the theory predicts that the intensity of the emitted light approaches zero as the wavelength decreases. And D says the theory predicts that the intensity of the emitted light becomes infinite as the wavelength decreases. And that's what I said. So the correct answer there is D. The, the theory predicts that the intensity of the emitted light becomes infinite as the wavelength decreases. Now, we have some free response here. We have to calculate that energy before the time goes, we say that. We say it calculates the temperature of that black body. So this I can just go through that quickly there. Yeah. Calculate the temperature. So now we want, we, we already know the link between we have temperature there. So I can calculate the temperature by K over lambda. So the temperature is going to be the constant is given 2.898 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 divided by the wavelength is given there as 20 times 10 raised to the power minus 9. Remember the nanometer. So the temperature is given there as if you use your calculator, you have times 10 raised to the power minus 10 raised to the power 5 Kelvin. So you must be able to do that. That is the free response. We have done that. So now we have the Planck's quantum hypothesis. Because of the tremendous discrepancies, somebody needed to correct the error. The error was through the prediction of Mr. Planck's. Planck's predicted that the energy of that light is directly proportional to its frequency. That's where the equation came from. The energy of that light was, that's just a prediction that works. He didn't have any justification for that, but it just works because of what he predicted. He says the quantum energy, the energy of this radiation did not flow continuously as what we are predicting, but it flows as packet. That's his prediction. That's Mr. Planck's, Planck's, Max Planck gave his Planck constant hypothesis. It states that the energy of that radiation was directly proportional to the frequency of that radiation. And we remove the proportion to use the constant, the constant here, this which is H is E all over F. And that constant was what we now refer to as this Planck's constant JS. That is the Planck's constant. That is what is on the board for you there. So that was his prediction. And I've just summarized there. The energy does not flow in continuous increase, as you see the diagram. It flows in step. That is a packet of energy, and each one has a relationship with its frequency. That was an assumption that needed to be done so that we can explain why this deviation took place here. So um, I am going to summarize the lesson here as I give you this question as an assignment. What discrepancies between experiments that helped lead Max Planck to a quantum theory? Remember what I said about the discrepancies that the, the classical physics did not match with what they observe on the data. So somebody needed to bring another theorem that will explain what they have seen. And Max just guessed. He said that the energy did not flow in continuous flow because of nature of light, but now it, it, he found out that, let's assume that the energy is now flowing in terms of quanta or packet or steps or energy levels. And when he assumed that, this just worked. So it was like uh, a breakthrough. So Max Planck was the one that theorized there and gave us that relationship and that one works. So you can, be, you can now, from what I've said, be able to answer the question. Discrepancies there, the options are A, discovery of the cathode ray, B, the discovery of X-ray, C, the electroviolet explosion. And that tells you that the, this did not reach the UV. This is ultraviolet zone. That was a big error there that did not reach here. That's an explosion. So I must, you must have got, got the answer for that. So we'll stop here for this lesson and we'll continue when we come back. Watch out for the next lesson. Thank you.